Before we start, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we're recording on. For me, that is the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And for me, it's the Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nation. Evie, with my boyfriend, with my by myself. <laughs> with my by myself. <laughs> my name's Judy. And she's got you, baby hand. Just show it to you, Kristen Wiig. She's the oh, best. I love baby hand so much. Anyway, welcome oh, back. Anyway, welcome. <laughs> Episode whatever we're having. 450. Um, welcome back to Two Girls One Pod. How are you this week? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this week, girl, I'm battered, I'm bruised, I'm sore, I've got you bruised. I've got I've got deaths, wounds, but Can I just interrupt you for one second? I did not know you could do the splits. And you can do the splits. And you did the splits for the dancing with the stars. I know. Which people will get to see next year you doing said splits, but whether they're real or not, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. I could be thinking I do them, but they look like. It could just be, yeah, me doing the splits, just <laughs> pretending. <laughs> just getting someone else's legs. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. You need to keep checking your TikToks because I keep sending you TikToks. I haven't stopped, even though you've stopped being on there. You need to go, and, and especially the last one that I sent, and it'll have something to do with splits. They're good, but I just I don't like going on it, girl, because I get stuck in such a TikTok hole for hours and I just don't have that kind of time. I know. You know what? Just look at the 400 I send you. No, because I go off on random ones where I look don't at like... Don't do that. Just look at the ones that I send you. I go looking at boys that do that freaking... You know what I'm talking about. Oh, it drives us insane. Ooh, what's it? the song they do? It's like the. Oh my god! And they go, they pretend they're getting handcuffed and they're like. Oh, that one. Dun, yeah, dun, we're, dun. these boys. In case anyone doesn't know what the hell we're talking about, they do these weird ass videos where they pretend to be getting pushed up against a wall by police, but it's their own hands pushing them up against. And then they look at a camera at the camera and they do sexy face. <gasps> It's so bad. It's so bad. I think we should do. It makes me our itch. Own. Ew. Imagine you and I try pretending to handcuff each other and then doing sexy faces to the camera. <laughs> the best part of those videos is the people that have taken the piss out of those videos and you see them. And then there's these two guys that took the piss out of those videos and the bloopers of said videos of them taking the piss out of those videos is very good videos. I don't mind those, but you know what that reminds me of those types of sicko videos is absolutely anything we would ever get up to when we lived together for four years, three years, three years, four years. Oh, who knows? I don't even know. I lived in that house for about seven and a half, eight years and you lived there for about three. I lived there permanently for three, but then I would come and go from London to Sydney. And then remember, I moved to London and you needed a lot of more help because usually you would just keep my room free. Yes. Um, and then I would come and go and stay on the couch when I was house sitting. Yes, that's right. So it was probably about four years, really. The house Evie and I are speaking of is actually a house where um, a beautiful man named Thomas Hancock. He has Down syndrome and type 2 diabetes and Evie originally moved in with him through a different friend and then he got the boot and Evie and I had just become friends and she was buttering me up to be the next housemate. We met... We met while we were doing promo. I was Mrs. Claus, you were my elf. That story is for another time. And we would laugh our asses off at things and I would pick you up from... King's Cross Station. Long trip from the cross to Miranda Westfields. Do you remember sometimes we take Tony Pepperoni back home? Our token gay friend. We loved he him. Was re- <laughs> he was really out there himself. But even he couldn't handle sometimes the crap that would come out of our mouth. He left. I stayed. And then I started to test you. Did you ever? Those testings. Now I look back and I was like, what a fool. What a fool. I pity the fool. I didn't see those testings coming. You were buttering me up real good. Tell me about these testings. I would say I had to do something, which I did. (laughs) I would ask you to come and stay the night and look after the dogs and Tom. If Tom was there... 
And then I kind of hit you with the, you should move in. You could totally do this. Like you've already done it. You're already. So you're like, Tom loves you. Yeah, he did. He loved you. He loved you more than he's loved anyone he's ever lived <laughs> with. I mean, he was in love with you. He loved you like a sister. He loved you like he was obsessed and and rightly so, <laughs> my God. He, just to get those sweet, sweet hugs from you. You gave him so much attention and you did so many things for him and I would just roll my eyes and go, girl, you don't have to do any of that. He would jingle his glass for you to <laughs> go and get face. him. <laughs> and I'd go, do you want more milk? More water? Okay, yep, yep, yep. You'd be like, that's not your job. You're his housemate slash you check on his diabetes. You are not his <laughs> carer. The whole set up with that house was independent living for Tom. Tom has type 1 diabetes and he has Down syndrome. And the model of the house was an independent living house where Tom could live on his own. So he would live with kind of a live-in carers who were flatmates, but it wasn't a group home, which is pretty much all there is for disability adults. His mum worked hard on that model. Yeah. So, and they're still, you know, they're still working on that, trying to get that out when, you know, um, people who didn't have a disability could go and live in this situation and look after in exchange for rent. To do a long story short, you know what you can do? You can go check out the documentary I made back in 2015 called Tom's Plan. Yes, great. And it, it features me, Evie Jones, Thomas, and our rescue. No, just Oscar and Leo back then. Yeah, well. But um, that, that shows the whole model. Actually, we'll put that on our notes or, I mean, I look. Excellent. I've got like a mullet and zero top lip. I think that's when you had really short hair because I'd cut I it did. at um, uh, Australia Day. But that's for another time as well. Anyway. So we lived in that situation for a while until you went travelling and then um, I had to get a new flatmate in the end. But during that time that we lived together, we got on Gogglebox. That time we um, fostered a billion dogs. We worked um, part time, full time. I think you worked full time at some point. I, I did, did off and on. I was at Paramount Pictures, and then I was like that. Remember, I was at Shootster as like a full time production coordinator, doing that and Gogglebox and having Tom and having the dogs. Let's just say it was, it was a lot. lot, and uh, that's when I used to drink white wine too, and didn't know I was a celiac monster. Yeah. And you used to eat dairy as well. Eating disorder on fleek. We weren't just flatmates. We weren't just carers. We weren't just this really – we were a really weird modern family and we would go on holidays together. We would go on road trips. We would go to the pub together, the, at the three of us. And Tom didn't drink, but he'd pretend to get drunk. Oh, bless him. And he'd be like, this is my beer. It would just be sparkling water and he'd scull it and he'd be like, I'm drunk and what do you do when you're drunk? And he's like, like Angeli. And I'm like, Tom, that was one time. Oh, he's so good. He was so good. We still FaceTime him. You FaceTime him a lot more. I'm dreadful. Um, but God, Oh, there was good times living together, wasn't it? I have so many memories pop up on my phone. And, you know, I moved in with you when I was only like 24, so all my girlfriends were still living in Sydney. And we would have like full parties in the backyard. And Tom Winters was about 32. And he just loved it. Being there with all these like, oh, my friends is all bloody gorgeous. He'd be there with all these like tens and he'd be loving himself. See, so he'd come out with his shirt off. And I would treat Tom as if he was just another one of my best mates or my brother or there was no, a lot of people would kind of tiptoe around that or be like, oh, you can't speak to him like that. And it was like, I will speak to him how he would want me to speak to him, which is just like me. And we really made him, it wasn't me and you and our, um, you know, mate Tom that needed to be cared for. It was the three of us. And we were a real family that also had to obviously, we'd wake up through the night, Tom screaming from having a hypoglycemic attack and you'd have to shove a needle in him and put food in his mouth. That's the biggest misconception about when people meet Tom. They think that, you know, he has carers for his Down syndrome and he doesn't. His Down syndrome is fine. He has carers because he needs to check his blood, you know, 12 times a day or more and he needs to have injections three times a day and he needs to eat six meals a day and you know you have to make sure that that's all working really well yeah together. it's it, it was like a, f a job in itself but it was a job that you loved because it was like looking after your family member it was funny because we got goggle box while we lived together and we just assumed they would want tom 
as well, the three of us on that show. And a lot of people don't know that Tom was in the house while we'd be filming. Some of the Gogglebox families would have other people in the house that, you know, they don't know about like children or um, partners. Um, uh, but we had Tom. Tom would be would be in his room watching football or watching something friggin' so loud. So loud. And we'd be like, Tom! <laughs> and we'd be filming. But we always just assumed they'd eventually bring Tom in. I always thought it was a shame. Yeah. They didn't bring Tom in. I mean, it would have just been Tom asleep on the lounge most of the time, to be fair. He'd never want to watch the stuff we watch. Could you imagine? He'd be like, I don't like it. And there's no filter. And also because Tom's quite hard to understand, We usually he could speak um, – through not through us, like he could speak, but if people didn't understand, we would then say, "Oh, he's asked for this." So it would be that constant backwards and forwards of that, which we don't mind doing. But I think in a show sense, to be a chop because such a choppy show, you couldn't do it. Um, but he was there, and he'd often come out and go one, two, three, action. And if you look really closely <laughs> in the back, you can sometimes see Tom standing at the door. Yeah, or his shadow walking up the hall from where we've yelled at him to get back. To <laughs> so if anybody is avid goggle box watcher which I know a lot of people have been in lockdown. Just Between look- season one and eight, you if you look closely, you can see Tom just lurking in the back. Oh, he's so funny. <laughs> but we went to like Bali together as a three, like a threesome, it sounded weird, as the three best friends that anyone could have. And then I went to the UK with him, which was a hefty journey. I remember he was so naughty. He did it way. <laughs> wanted to sit in the middle and I was just like no I'll sit in the middle because he'll just fall asleep and he kept trying to talk to the guy next to him and sometimes if you're not used to that people get quite overwhelmed with you know not knowing how to respond to Tom and then me whipping out these big needles and checking his blood like drawing blood from him every two hours on a 17 20 hour flight and I'd get up and he'd sneak next to the person start talking to them I'm like Tom they're asleep he'd be so excited he loved travelling. Well, actually, add a photo, if you guys haven't seen, of us three together just to, you know, give you a little glimpse into the madness of our modern-day family. It was such it was such a good time. And we'll and- slowly have to um, bring up memories and videos and things, you know, if for the future. You, we'll just start popping up videos of the three of us. People know somebody that is, um, you know, not able-bodied or care for people themselves, so it's nice to talk about this and know that, you know, we've we've been there, we loved it, and it's a little part of our lives that we'll cherish forever. Evie Jones, I've done some research. What did you research? So lately I've been watching Maths UK because you told me to and um, about, you know, how most women in the UK and probably here too, their wedding day is just like it's such a day. It's like such a day to celebrate. And I'm like, do you know what marriage is from like originally from where it originated from back in the day? Yeah. Like you, There's so many different forms obviously depending on what religion you are. But um. It's not a nice celebration. You're practically handing yourself over to another man that's not your father and that's not something I personally want. I know it's different now. It's celebration day. Well, sometimes it is different. Sometimes it's still exactly the same, you know, arranged marriages and not saying that they're bad, like, you know, they can really work for people. Um, But marriage as a whole is quite an antiquated notion, I think, that we still do to this day. And some people can really make it work, you know, when they look at and treat it, I think, as the union that it is of two people coming together, no matter the gender or the background, but two people coming together to be equal in a union of a commitment for the rest of whatever, um, it can be a really great thing, a marriage. You know, you can marry foods together. You can marry things that work well together because marriage has been around for a very long time. But I think divorce has been around for almost as long. Oh, probably not because women would just have to stay because you didn't have a choice. I don't think divorce has been around for just as long. I think men would just get other wives and the other women would have to stay, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, I don't know. I, I would have to you have to look right into that. I, I, you know, for us as Christians, white Christians, I think ours comes from, you know, selling your daughter for some cattle and, you know, 
it often being arranged from the birth of the child of the girl knowing the family knowing where the the child was going to go to what family you know it could be a clans thing as well but it's funny um how many people think that marriage means soulmates yeah you know Last week, um, I, my very dear friend Nicole lost her mother and they had a COVID-restricted funeral for her and um, I watched that funeral on the computer, as everyone was, and it was so beautiful. Her father made this amazing eulogy. Um, she died of dementia and, she, you know, as anyone knows, dementia is an extremely hideous but very long disease that will eventually take your life um but it takes everything it robs you of absolutely everything and you need care for quite a long time towards the like you know in the in the last half I guess of whatever it is of your life um but he wouldn't give up he wouldn't let her go into care he loved her so much and he was so in you know in love with her and she was truly his soulmate they were soulmates and he refused to let her go into care. You know, the family would beg him, not beg him, but like, Dad, you know, come on, you don't have to do this. He would change her pants yeah, a couple of times a day, you know, like he just wouldn't do it until it was absolutely necessary. The way he spoke about her, I th- it really made me think of how many people end up staying in marriages that I think us as a society have pushed. You know, I remember at my brother's, wedding my dad (laughs) my dad made the most depressing speech oh god it was it was so awkward we were all looking at each other like what is he doing but he got up and decided to tell everyone how hard marriage is well he's not wrong he's not wrong but it's not really what you want at the wedding you want everyone to be in bliss full unawareness and this is going to last forever and it's going to be wonderful ignorance is bliss but he was just like you you know it's really hard it's like really is it that hard for you because i'm pretty sure you get to live your best life i think it's harder for the wife (laughs) yes yes and that's the thing i think that there's a, a real pressure on us to succeed in marriages that may not really be worth staying in I think as a society, we don't allow people to leave marriage easily. You know, it's right in the vows, till death do us part, or even just forever. No one says, until I just don't want to be with you anymore. Yeah, which we all do. We grow out of things. Like we're humans. We grow out of socks. We grow out of clothes. We grow out of friendships. Yeah, seasons change and so do you, really. So (laughs) don't beat yourself up too much if you get over old mate. Yeah, I think, and I think we need to start making it a little bit easier for women to leave yes especially financially you know because women find it very hard yeah but I that's another thing I noticed when I was watching the show I was like these women were like 25 and they were like oh I'm not married yet and I need to have kids and I was like do you or has society made you feel that way and I personally know the pressure too like especially coming from a coastal town like yourself as well Evie you hit an age where Mainly, like, older generations will be like, like, especially my nan, she'll be like, oh, when are you getting married or when are you going to have a baby? And I'm like... When are you giving me grandchildren? My mum always says, when are you going to give me grandchildren? And I'm like... Or my dad one time said, I'll change when you have children. And I was like, don't you dare put that kind of pressure on me. Oh, it's mean, isn't it? You change because you want to change. And he's like, and and I'll take the kid out. And I'm like, well, you, you could be looking after me I'm still your child at the end of the day I would like that sweet sweet loving yeah yeah it's interesting to watch these women make this day about them then I like did research on like marriage obviously and being a wife yeah we're not getting a lot out of it yeah and but if you want it out of your out of more of a spiritual because obviously there's religion there's Mm, it's all different reasons isn't there yeah there's so many things but if you want it because of a soul-based thing and you both want to take each other's names and it's not this like ownership then get amongst it but after watching maths uk i was just like god it's such like gender roles and the wife is like you're kind of just like handed over to another male and i just would not want that um personally and i don't know it just made me a bit depressed if i'm to be honest (laughs) i hear you with that though you don't need to get married in order to have that pure love because i think soulmates come 
in all shapes, sizes, experiences. Like you and I have always said that we're soulmates. Mm. It's funny. I think every episode we have mentioned Sex in the City, which is actually not surprising. But another Sex in the City reference is when they talked about soulmates one episode and I think it was... Charlotte, she says it. Yeah, what if we're each other's soulmates and the men come and go? Yeah, she said men are these these nice guys that come in and out of our lives. And I was like, oh, amen. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of pressure to meet someone, fall in love, and that's your soulmate. And if it is... Oh, my God, how wonderful and beautiful. But you can have just as beautiful a soulmate connection with someone that isn't romantically involved with you. Yes, definitely. At the end of the day. It's the end of the day. At the end of the day, it's about midnight. No, you know what? At the end of the day, your soulmate, you can have more than one as well. We often don't put much in that. Oh, he was my soulmate. He was my, but he was my soulmate. Well, Dal, you're not dead yet, as Susan Beryl would always say. You're not dead yet, Dal. Get married, don't get married, have a soulmate, whatever is your soulmate, enjoy it. That's all we you say, know- as long as you're not hurting anybody. <laughs> yes. Just love your life, right. just live in your life. Hey, because I'm a paper chaser. Live- <laughs> At the end of the day, I'd just like to say... <laughs> It's a song of the heart. It's the rest of the world. Let in the dark. That's freedom. And that's my other John Farnham reference. Oh, thank God. I was wondering where they at. Anyway, that's curtains for us. It's time to go. Stinky onion. It is time to go. <laughs> stinky onion. Remember the ad? Yes, it's time we do. To go no stinky one knows onion. it ever. And we always like, it's time to go. Stinky onion. I must do that to Benjamin Norris sometimes, see if he knows the reference. He'll know. God, help me. Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus on a bendy bicycle. We're done. Say goodbye, Evie, for fuck's sake. Goodbye, Evie, for fuck's sake. Say goodbye to your friends, Babysitter's Club. All you need is friends. Welcome to Illyrium. No, you could. No, it's not Illyrium. Making it up myself. Making it up myself. Making new, making new memories. Anyway, th- that was us. Thank you for listening, us. <laughs> Thank you for listening to us. I'm, a, I'm Amy Jones. This is Angie. I'm too drunk on my dog. It's my baby dog. It's my baby dog. All right, say goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Please head to Apple Podcasts and rate and review the show. You can get in touch with us directly by emailing the podcast to girls at neverentertainment.com.io and follow us on the Instagrams. You know where it's at. If not, we'll put it in the notes. And, ladies and gentlemen, that's the way you're doing. <laughs>